Hey everybody, welcome back. It is I, Uncle Greg, a.k.a. The Free American Spirit, and today we're talking about painting my aluminum hole with Fasco Flex Steel Epoxy Paint. Now, as you can see in these photos, and that's because I lost some of the footage, but don't worry, there's plenty. Uh, there's a lot of blotches that are in this paint job uh, that has nothing really to do with the product per se. I think it has to do with some things I did, and we'll explain that a little later in the video. And you know, just show you what I did to overcome it and, and whatnot. But anyways, the company itself was great. I bought all these products myself. They didn't sponsor this, but their customer service was excellent. They gave me tips, suggestions. They sent me some free stuff to help me get over it because, you know, it's their name. So excellent, excellent company. And I can't stress enough, part of the solution is make sure when you wipe this down with acetone, you do it several times I mean a lot of shop rags just when you think it's clean enough do it again in addition to that do not use the same containers when you're mixing like a second batch or a third batch or a fourth batch so without further ado let's get into it and make things happen captain okay kids so I don't know if you can see this in the, this lighting but all these blemishes I called Fasco up, talked to, I guess, the owner, the, the head guy in charge, and he was, I was describing these blotches to him, um, especially where it was really runny, and he said, well, you know, the yellow has a hard time covering stuff in any event, but it looks like it covered it really well, he says, but this stuff, it sounds like, and he had a name for it, which I won't know until I call him back and get it, because I already forgot, but I'll let you know what it's called. He said, this stuff looks like brown earwax and whatever. He says, get some of this Dawn soap, scrub it down real good. Most of that should be gone if that's what he thinks it is, you know, if it turns out to be true. Um, and then he said, but as far as like the run goes itself, you know, if that's a paint run like this one, he said, then you'll have to sand that down and go over it, you know, which is not a big deal. But he said, you know, I told him I followed the directions you know, I let it sit between coats. And he said, well, it's usually because of high humidity. You know, it is here in Florida. We do have humid. Um, I'm not in direct sunlight, but I am in an open barn here. But in any event, it could have been humid. Or he said, you know, just based on temperatures or whatever, you might have had to wait a couple hours instead of an hour, hour and a half. You know, like I was told, it really depends on how thick it is when you put it on. You know, I felt pretty tacky. Thought it was dry enough maybe you know i put the second and third coat on whatever but i'm really interested i got this dom we're gonna mix it up and we'll try this spot right here and see if anything comes off but you can see i don't know if you can see these little streaks you know this is like oils and stuff that come out of here you know and he said well that's from it's made to be this way because it's really slick he says so before you could put any paint over this or any stickers you'd have to sand it down a little bit or whatever and clean it because this stuff, you know, there's enzymes or whatever that's not enzymes, but uh, polymers and silicone and Teflon and whatever that's mixed in with this. That's why it's so slippery. And I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but that's, that's pretty slippery, man. I mean, <laughs> alrighty, let's clean this up and show you what it looks like. Well, kids, I scrubbed it with a scrub brush. You still see the soap on here. Okay, it just didn't come off, so that was kind of a bummer. And then I thought, well, maybe the scrub brush wasn't abrasive enough. So then I took this scotch pad and scrubbed it again. Still didn't come off. Now, I haven't rinsed this, but it looks like you got the fingerprint stuff off here. So I'm going to rinse this off. And unfortunately, that didn't cure it. So I am going to send him photos. He will look at them today, um, and I will get it. I'm going to try sanding down a spot and then with a couple spots and then with what I got a little bit left over just put a thin coat over and see what happens there so let's try that next so I'm here on the other side this is the worst of it don't know how good you can see that once again the Sun okay so if you can see up here so we're gonna take the sanding disc and we're gonna sand that down some and then we're going to put a small coat over and if that works then I'll just get another you know I'll sand on all the bad areas 
and we'll just get another coat put another you know another quart and put another thin coat so let's see how that does all right so i've sanded all these areas down smooth i didn't want to you know go all the way down the metal there's a couple spots that went to metal you can see there but I got rid of all the you know like the what do you call it where it dripped it doesn't you know it doesn't stand out my brain's fried i've been working on this for so much i can't can't stand it but we'll get her figured out so obviously this is going to be a little test um, what I'm thinking is is everywhere where I sand down that glossy finishes off now don't know if you can hear that but you can over here you can't even hear my finger and over here you can so the areas that I sanded of course this stuff will stick pretty good and the areas I didn't sand you know if I were to leave it, it would probably just lay and chip off eventually because that's so slick. So this is a test spot. We're going to try it out. And if it does the trick, I'll come back and I'll lightly sand that whole area all the way down. You know, so it's an even sanding all the way. And then when I get more, we will, you know, then do a whole coat. And we'll see how that works out. So let me know in the comments. What you think so far this is you know this is all new to me epoxy paints are tricky you know it all depends on your humidity your heat make sure you mix them correctly in the ratios you know some pigments work better than others you know some colors yellow are harder to cover up that's probably why everybody likes black and brown i mean there's all kinds of little things that go into this so you know just think about all that so you're prepared to do it right the first time so you don't have to go through my mistakes and figure out what's happening like subscribe share the links kids it would help me out a lot and you'll learn about stuff like this by doing so all right we're gonna see how much we got in here looks like it separates some so we're this is part two with the pigment in it so we're gonna have to mix that really really good before we add it to part one so I'm only going to use about maybe four ounces of each and test it on these spots you know a couple ounces of each test it on the spots got another new measuring thingy so once i mix these together uh, i'll mix the two parts for about six minutes make sure they're good and mixed and then i will apply some of that i've washed that off sanded it down cleaned it well okay so on second thought I just decided I will scuff the whole side down since I've just got about eight ounces left so I scuffed this whole side down and I'm gonna tape up that rim again and we will just see if I can put a thin coat over and see if that makes it look a lot better I just gotta wipe all this dust off and clean it off now wiping it all down the yellow pigments now all over my my wife's good towel, she's not going to like that, so, you know, do me a favor, just don't nobody tell her. All right, keep cool. Let's mix this part two here to part one. I'll just do a couple ounces and got me a fresh roller. I got to go back to those, get more rollers and more of those thingies. All right, kids, let's try the grand experiment. There, it looks mixed, but it's not, because we've only been mixing 15 seconds. I have finished putting a thin coat on this side so you can see it's still kind of dirty looking there that stuff shows through you know when it dries it may look a little bit better but I found you know after watching these coats dry that typically the yellow gets a little darker but those areas don't now those have been sanded down so that is better looking than it was so this is telling me you know, after it dries all the way, I'm just using this last little roller to catch any drips that I see that I will have to sand those places down again and do them. So I might have to get a couple quarts and just do both sides. You know, just really take my time, take some fine sandpaper, you know, and just really carefully sand it down, let it dry, do another coat, let it have no product left to see if I can cover it, but that's what I didn't 
coat so it does look better but it's going to take a little bit so i think in the end that stuff is still harder hard as can be slick as can be that's the bottom you know i'm not going to go buy a gallon and redo the whole bottom and stuff but i'll do these sides and um and then eventually from here up i'll scuff that down and probably paint it colors but there'll be some you know stickers on there you know it'll say the name of the boat and it'll have the stickers for the coast guard on there and that kind of thing so that's going to hide some of that anyways so i think once i put one or two small coats on it it's going to get the bulk of it gone and then you know where the stickers are i'll try to place them over bad spots if possible and we'll just see how that goes the back it's not too bad it's got a little bit down there and it dried a little better so maybe i'll put another thin coat over that in the back too but it looks way better than the sides came out so this side was the better side you can see i haven't messed with it or touched it but you can see how it looks there hey kids welcome back let's just do a real quick summary so we've taken the sides and have sanded them down some parts in bare metal but mostly as rough as we could get it i have as you can see it's still wet down there same with the other side instead of using the old type of etching that we used now we're using just vinegar white vinegar uh, that's what danny over at steel flex said to try that so we're trying a whole new different way so we've got that sanded down we use these special pads to do that these p80 nets instead of these regular sanding dish you get at lowe's we've got new steel flex here this is not the super slick 2000 like we used before this is the regular what is it 9xn got a fresh yellow pigment one ounce to go with the quart um, we've got all new materials here so we don't use anything that may or may not be contaminated and i'm using a different roller this is a foam type roller we'll see how that works out and i got a bunch of them as danny just said replace them off and so you know i'll do a small section i'll replace it do another small section replace it so i'm just letting that vinegar set in and once that's dry i'm going to wipe it down one more time and then hand dry it just to make sure all the dust and stuff is off of this and there's nothing on there and then we will paint it and see if that XN9 covers it up and makes it yellow. And uh, we've left the super slick on the bottom. We're not going to mess with that because I don't care if this works really well. I may put a piece of tape across here and just, you know, touch up this ugly stuff here. But to be quite honest, we have been working so much and on this boat, I'm just wore out. And, you know, maybe I just should pay them to do it. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, kids, let's see how it turns out. All right, boys and girls, took that epoxy, a second quart, did two coats on each side. This is the real messed up side. It's blending a little better. Um, I think we're going to go with that backup plan. I'll get some spray enamel or something. I'll look for some good spray boat paint. And before I lay it down, I'll take some 220 or something to move, smooth out some of the little run spots. I don't have many run spots. It's still a little blotchy, but way, way better than it was. So that spray paint should cover it up. There's a spot there. It's not so great. But anywho, that's looking not too bad. And the other side over here, this is looking really good. So just to let you know, if you're going to use the Flex Steel, it's great paint. Good epoxy bond. It's harder than can be. Got some runs right there. But Use a super slick on the bottom if you want, but don't use the here. It's just too much to deal with on the sides. And uh, did real good on the bottom where it lays kind of flat and you can control it a little bit better. But here on the sides, it's just it's a nightmare. I'm putting on a second, third coat or whatever. So I'm going to have links to it. Super slick 2000 up there is great. The regular super slick, or excuse me, the regular. Uh, Fasco steel flex down here is good, and then you can paint over it. So, tell me what you think of that. Give the thumbs up, subscribe, share the video, yada yada yada. 
To summarize my mistakes, here's what I think happened. First off, I shouldn't have used Super Slick 2000 on the sides. It's really not made for the sides, but you know, I'm young and stupid. The second thing was I was working in high humidity. The third thing was I was doing it stretched out over a long period of time. Uh, the fourth thing was when I took those stickers off on the side, I sanded them off. I should have used a heat gun to get them off. And what I think happened was, you know, I wiped that boat down so many times to clean it that when I did the one side, I didn't get all that red pigment off from the Bass Tracker sticker and it was still in there. So that side I painted first and then I painted the other side. So that's why you have one side that was really bad and you had one side that was just only a little bit bad. And the last thing was, I think one time I used one of those measuring cup dealies twice. So, you know, live and learn from my mistakes. But, and let's get back to wrapping this up and it all in all it came out pretty good. And uh, we'll get on to the next step because this is killing me. It's been taking about two weeks to do this. You know, I'm old. I can only do a little bit at a time. And so that's kind of a pain. Uh, most of that was, you know, getting the old paint off. But if I was a young guy, I would have taken it all down the bare metal instead of maybe touching it up. I would have just went all the bare metal and redid it on the sides. Well, tell you the truth, despite my best efforts to screw it up, I think it came out pretty good. So I hope you liked the video, share and subscribe.